In the spirit of the ocean topic, I would like to paint with you a fascinating creature, an octopus. As usual, let's take a moment to discuss the colors that we will need uh, to paint the octopus. So I will only use uh, two, maybe three colors, mostly two. And um, I'm using colors from Rosa, which is a Ukrainian brand of professional watercolor. And here I have a very particular colors, uh, tones of uh, brown, that I think will work perfectly for our octopus. So here I have Mother Brown, which is uh, leaning towards red a lot, but it's still brown. And I'm going to use it as the main color for the skin of our creature. And to go darker in in its tone, I will use Caput Mortum, also from Rosa, and at some point just mix them together. I also really like Royal Brown, which is which has a very nice deep uh, brown shade, so I think I will introduce it here and there while painting my octopus, but these two guys will be the main colors for today. Of course, I understand that not everybody will have these exact <laughs> uh, colors. So, uh, if you have a brown color, let's say burnt sienna, which is very typical for any watercolor set, you can always try to mix your own color to match what you need to achieve. So, let's say if I add a little bit of pink, well, that's a bit too much, so I need more of burnt sienna here. We will get something that is matching my first color of choice. This one. Now, I've prepared my sketch ahead of time. It took me a little while to actually draw every single element of my octopus, and I understand that it might take some time for you as well, especially considering the proportions and um, the perspective, because here we have the arm of the octopus curled uh, into some sort of a spiral that starts from a tiny drop over here and then gets larger and wider. So using the rules of perspective, we can show that this uh, arm of the octopus is three-dimensional and then the um, width of our arm is going to go wider, wider and wider and the suckers, the parts of the octopus which he uses to <laughs> attach himself to objects uh, are going to have to change their shape as well as we see the curve of the arm. So the circle uh, will become an oval at some point uh, will be a little bit compressed or wider, depending on the perspective. So if we see the arm looking at us and turned towards us, the circle will be more um, wide and open. And uh, the second line of suckers here, they will be looking more like flat ovals. So now that the sketch is figured out, I will make it much, much, much lighter using my kneadable eraser. And after that, we will start painting. First, I want to work on every circle. And uh, I will take a very, very light layer. Almost completely diluted with water. And with that, I will go over each circle and prepare it for my painting. So that's too light. With the dot light moves, I am kind of showing where those tiny circles are.
And again, they must be so light and so transparent that they almost seem white. And now I'm not going to cover all of them right up. I'll work in, in short <laughs> sections and steps. I will take a concentrated color on the tip of my brush. I took a smaller brush with a pointy end and the pigment is so dry that it's almost not painting. But because of that, when I'm touching the paper, the pigment is um, bleeding, but just a little bit. So in the center of each circle, there will be uh, another little circle that I want to show again. Now it's more visible. The brush is very dry. It almost doesn't leave any stroke on the paper if I would do it on a dry paper. But because the layer here is still wet, when I touch it with my super dry brush, it still uh, gets this nice uh, soft circle over here. The second line of suckers, I'll just underline each of them. Because of the perspective, we don't see this inner circle. We only see the outline. And now we can continue. Very, very transparent layers on every circle and oval. Just a few, not too many. Then super dry brush with a darker brown tone and we are showing either the inner circle or the outline. Sometimes you can see both depending on how much the circle is opening to us. I would prefer for a color to not blend as much as it does here. So next time I need to wait a little bit longer for the paint to sink in. Meanwhile, I'll rinse my brush over tissue so it gives away the water and carefully just uh, kind of stretch out this pigment around so that it still looks like a circle, it's recognizable but it's not so diluted. Yeah, this one is perfect because the, um, the stroke is not super dry and the layer was wet enough. Here I'd like to go back and kind of help define this inner circle a little bit more. As well as outline. So at this point, it's a combination of working dry and wet and dry and dry. Dry and wet means that first I lay down a watery layer 
like I'm doing right now. And after that, I'm picking up a very dry pigment on a dry brush and adding it to the wet layer that I just created. This gives us an opportunity to get a bit softer line, softer stroke, softer circle. It doesn't look like a very dry, um, sharp uh, outline. And now it might not make much sense to you, but <laughs> bear with me because later on I will be adding the um, actual skin color and this dry line will melt into the skin color and look much more organic than it is looking now. Alright, there's a lot of space to cover, so without too much distraction, <laughs> I am moving forward and carefully covering every circle with a very, very, very transparent layer of brown. And while those layers are still wet, I am introducing very dry pigment by painting the inner circle. Now I'll get my mother brown, very vibrant <laughs> brown color that looks, uh, that leans towards red and start painting the skin of the octopus. So I'll make my first stroke. And then I'd like to dilute it, dilute the edge of it so it's touching the bubbles that we just painted before. And at the same time I'm using it as an opportunity to sort of create the separation between each sucker.
So while I'm following this uh, spiral, I'm gonna get my Caput Mortem, which is a darker brown, and add some of the shadow right away. So it's better to do while the first layer is still wet so that the color blends in more harmoniously. Took me a bit longer so now I have to actually blend it in manually. But I will keep that in mind. Also I need to separate the two lines of our bubbles over here. and carefully dilute my stroke inside so again with my skin color I'm going all the way close to the suckers that I just created before And sometimes we'll need to sort of outline some of them and create little strokes down. Like if they're on, on little legs. <laughs> And continue moving on. Here I accidentally painted over my light area, so I need to remove the pigment while I still can. So if your stroke is too sharp, too bright, too concentrated, you can always correct it with a semi-wet brush. The skin of the octopus is very bright, so do not worry if your colors turn out to be too vibrant. The thing that I would like to achieve here is a smooth transition of tones, but if the general color of the skin is too vibrant, I don't really mind that. It's also a good opportunity to outline the, high, the lightest areas, like for example here. So with the negative space technique you are creating the shape of those white, whitish <laughs> uh, bubbles.
here again I would like to show those sort of legs <laughs> and it's best to do when the paper is getting dry but still isn't uh, too dry so the stroke is nice and thin and soft And actually this second row is going to be a bit darker so I'm pressing my brush belly down just kind of marking those circles once more they are mostly covered with shadow because of the perspective so the second row is kind of underneath the first one that's why you don't really see it very well and it's also covered with shadow Here I don't want to go too much into the detail, so I'm kind of blurring in, <laughs> blurring away some of the parts of the octopus. Again, I need to outline every single circle that I have so we clearly see its um, shape and it's easier to do right now not in the beginning because if we would have done it in the beginning we might not match the same color and then you would have this uh, 
noticeable outline uh, standing out like in a, I don't know, coloring book <laughs> uh, and not blending in organically with the rest of the octopus body. So in the end of the day, the most complicated part is really just to sketch <laughs> the drawing of the octopus and get all the proportions right, so that every circle is in its own place. And really how much you open the circle, depending on the perspective, on the way how we see it, it really creates this feeling of a realistic um, octopus arm. because everything else is really just uh, color in, in between <laughs> uh, in between each uh, spiral. Most of the time I was using wet and dry technique by applying bright skin color, my brown color, uh, on paper without previously adding any water on it, so there was no uh, wet on wet technique. Earlier, of course, when we were preparing the space for those suckers, the bubbles, um, we needed to use two techniques at the same time, so wet on dry and then dry on wet to help create the texture that we needed. As you can see, I'm not really uh, uh, trying to make it perfect. I'm just literally dropping the shadow here and there. And if uh, my stroke is uh, uh, too thick, for example, or too sharp, I dilute it with the brush. But most of the time, I have watery, uh, kind of half circle is enough. And voila, <laughs> we have our uh, octopus watercolor painting here. 
I hope it wasn't uh, too long <laughs> uh, to work on but it's very repetitive and kind of meditative work with only really two colors so I really enjoyed the process of creating this uh, painting because it really makes you uh, well it made me <laughs> to relax and think uh, fly somewhere in my thoughts uh, and I would really be happy to see your paintings and uh, I see you in the next tutorial.